Hi everyone, welcome to the next video on the history of medicine. Now, we've just finished the Renaissance and we've moved forward to a time called the Industrial Revolution, 1750 to 1900, roughly, 150 years. And those 150 years were a time of change. And we're going to have a look at what actually changed in medicine. Now, the Industrial Revolution, industry, in its simplest form, it means work. Factories were built, railways were built, canals were built. It was a time of change, quick change. Evolution is slow change. Revolution is quick change. So did it lead to progress in medicine? That's what we're going to be having a look at over the next few videos. Now, the first one, it's all about a man called Dr. Edward Jenner. Now, Jenner, what is he famous for? What progress, if any, did he bring? Well, it's to do with preventing illness, not curing it, preventing it, stopping people from getting ill in the first place. Now, let's have a look what we've got here. Oh, two cows, a lot of cows together. Have you heard the story? What have cows heard? Sorry. Sorry about that. Terrible jokes. Do you want to hear another one? <laughs> stop it. I must stop milking it. <laughs> last joke. Last joke. Now then, here's my Irish cow. Do you know what she's called? No. She's called Daisy. Oh, really? No. O'Reilly. Oh, hey! Stop it. Until the end of the video, that's no more, no more cow jokes. Now, sorry about that. Edward Jenner, prevention of disease. He was a country doctor. So a lot of the patients that he saw were the milkmaids, the women who milked the cows. And he noticed that they got a disease called cowpox, which they contacted from touching the cows, milking them. But here's his big breakthrough. Jenna spots that these milkmaids with the cowpox did not get the far more serious and killer disease, smallpox. 1751, 10 people a day in London died from smallpox. It was a terrible disease. Jenna notices. Well, what does he do? He carries out a scientific experiment. There we see the impact of the Renaissance. Let's do scientific experiments to test our ideas. Now, before Jenner's idea, we had something called inoculation. Lady Montague had been over in Turkey and she'd seen this method. And what they would do is, let's say, there's a spot there full of pus. So they would take either a piece of silk and then they would Dip it so that you get the pus on there. Can you see there? So I've got the pus now from the infection. Then they would take a knife and make two cuts. There you are. Then they would get the pus and drag it into the blood like that. And that was called inoculation. That was the method that people used to try to prevent disease. Many, many doctors used inoculation. But then Jenner came along with his new idea. And Jenner says, right, I'm going to do a slightly different thing. So he takes an eight year old healthy boy called James Phipps. And he gets some cowpox from a milkmaid called Sarah Nelms. And he injects the cowpox into James Phipps. James Phipps becomes slightly unwell because he's got the cowpox. After a few days, a week or so, Edward Jenner then does his very brave and very risky experiment. He takes some smallpox. Remember, smallpox was a killer. And he injected the smallpox into James Phipps. He was taking a big risk. Fortunately for James Phipps, unfortunately for Edward Jenner, and fortunately for the rest of mankind, 
Jenna's idea worked. Somehow the cowpox had protected James Phipps from the smallpox. This was progress. A change had occurred. 1796, this was quite important. So, what happened next? Well, 1798, Jenner publishes his report. His results, his experiments, they are published. And we have the first vaccination. It comes from the Latin word for cow, which is vacca. So we get the first vaccination. Great idea. Great progress. Hooray. Well, let's take the next stage of the story. What factors were involved? What helped Jenner? Number one, observation. He'd spotted the link between cowpox and smallpox. Number two, he'd done a scientific experiment. Number three, he'd shown bravery and determination. Number four, money comes into it, linked very closely with factor five, the government. Because in 1802, the British government gave Jenner £10,000 to do more research. He used it to set up a clinic, all to do with vaccination. In 1806, they gave him another £20,000. So they've given him £30,000. This was a change. Because before then, the government used to follow a policy called laissez-faire. Nothing to do with us. Sort it out yourself. We're not interested. But now the government were getting involved and providing money to help medicine make progress. So you would think, very good news. 1840, the smallpox vaccination was free for all infants. 1853, the smallpox vaccination became compulsory. 1871, the smallpox vaccination, it was strictly enforced. If you do, did not give it to your child, you were fined. That surely is progress. Great news, end of video. But no, here's something to think about. Many people opposed were against this new development this new change by Edward Jenner. Why? Why would they be against such a great idea? Have a think about that. Hmm. Any ideas? Well, here's a couple. Some people don't like change. They're afraid of it. Fear of change, fear of new ideas. One reason why some people oppose Jenner. The second one, remember when I was talking about inoculation? Well, many doctors used to use that. And many doctors were paid well for doing inoculation. Well, now they're losing their money. For example, the Sutton brothers in Suffolk, they were very famous for doing inoculation. So they're not going to welcome an idea which is going to put them and their money out of a job. Not very happy. Some people didn't like the idea that it seemed as if human beings were being somehow infected by animals, the cows. They didn't understand it and they were resistant to that idea, very old fashioned. Some people didn't believe it worked. And indeed, some of the people who used Jenner's methods got it wrong, so it didn't work. And also, remember, Jenner was a lowly country doctor. Some of the top doctors in London said, well, what can he teach us? I'm not going to accept him. Who's he? A, a country doctor? I'm the top man. So put all of that together and you see quite a lot of reasons why people were opposed at first to Jenner's new discovery. Now, here's somebody new for us. We're going to see a lot of this new pupil. Hi. My name's Is He Important? Is He Important? Do you get it? Is He and Is He Important? Well, how important? This is a question that's often asked in the exam. How important was the discovery of, in this case, Edward Jenner? Was it very important? Quite important? A bit important? 
Not at all important. That's what you have to work out. That's what you have to decide. Well, how important was the work of Jenna? Well, to give you a, a couple of ideas to help you. Da, 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 da. Here we have the flag of America. 1808, Thomas Jefferson, President of America, wrote a letter to Edward Jenner. Wow. President of America, Edward Jenner, a lowly country doctor, and he's writing Jenner a letter. Why? Well, in the letter, it says this. I'll read it to you. What do you think? Medicine has never before produced any single improvement of such utility. Mankind can never forget that you have lived. Wow. Jefferson is saying your development is very, very useful. It's very important. Thank goodness you were born because you have saved many, many lives. And he did. Over in America, the Native Americans were being wiped out by smallpox. Once the vaccination was available, it was able to save people's lives by preventing them getting the disease. So, go back to our pupil. Is he important? Was Jenna's work a turning point? How significant was it? Well, in the exam, always try and look at both sides of that argument. You could say, yes, Jenna's work was significant. It was important because it was the first successful attempt at preventing or stopping a killer disease. It was important, yes, because he saved thousands of lives from smallpox and later millions of lives. Yes, it was important because he showed the value of science and experiments and tests. Yes, it was important because he persuaded the government to get involved and not sit back laissez-faire, nothing to do with me. They got involved. So you could say Jenna has set up cheerful Charlie change there because there has been progress. However, look at the other side. On the other side, is he important? Is he very important? Well, you could say no, because Jenna's idea only worked on one disease, smallpox. It was not effective yet on other diseases. You could say no. Jenna got lucky. He spotted this link, this change between cowpox and smallpox, but nothing else. You could say no. It wasn't super important because Jenna could not explain how or why, remember those key words, how or why, it worked. He couldn't explain it. Doctors would say to him, OK, Jenna, if it's so good, how does it work? Why does it work? Explain it to me. And he couldn't. He had no real understanding. All he could do was say, look, it works. So there's yes and no. Think of it like a balance. And then in the exam, talk about both sides but then make your judgment, make your decision. How important was it in your opinion? Now, Jenna, late 1790s, 1800s, that's when all the work was done on smallpox. Remember what I said? He could not explain how it worked or why it worked. For that, we needed to wait another 50, 60 years for the work of a man called Louis Pasteur. And I'll talk about Louis Pasteur in the next video. But to return to the cows, there we see. Now, we've heard the story of Jenna. In your opinion, how much did Jenna move medicine forward? Hope it's been useful. All the best. See you soon.